Hi, I'm Reverend Rick Brown. Welcome to online worship at St. James United Church in Waterdown, Ontario for the fourth Sunday in Lent or the second Sunday in shutdown as it's also known now. Our online worship is shorter than our regular worship because viewing worship on a screen is really just not the same as being here in person. We're also combining music from both our contemporary and traditional services. And the musicians, as you'll see, were practicing good social distancing and proper hygiene by spreading out across the stage, though we might have to do even more next week, we'll see. So now I want you to take a moment, relax, create a sacred space for yourself wherever you are right now, be silent and center yourself on God and enter into a time of worship with us now.
I'm Reverend Rick Brown from St. James United Church in Waterdown, Ontario. I'm speaking to you from Rattlesnake Point in Burlington, just a few minutes east of Waterdown. Remember, social distancing doesn't need to be indoors and on the couch. You can go outside for a walk and enjoy the beautiful locations that are around us just like we have here. Today, we're going to be talking about whether God sent the coronavirus to teach us a lesson. But first, let's listen to today's scripture story. Our scripture reading today comes from John's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. This is the story of a man born blind who receives his sight. Let us listen for the word of God. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Has the coronavirus been sent for a reason? In other words, did God send the virus in order to teach the world a lesson? I've, I've heard people saying that they believe the virus has been sent to us for a reason, to, to teach us some sort of lesson that we're meant to learn something from this. And, and, and I'm sorry, I don't agree. Because if you take that line of thought to its logical conclusion, it becomes horrible. If, if all of this was just part of God's plan, then why didn't God simply not introduce the virus in the first place? Why, why introduce pain and fear and panic just to teach us a lesson? Why did God allow the virus? Why did God create the virus? That's what some people are asking. Just so we can learn a lesson? Well, I, I don't believe that's how God works. That's a, a bit like, say, a teacher beating a student in front of a classroom in order to teach the other students a lesson. And in this case, that lesson comes at the expense of people dying. That would be one cruel teacher if that was for real. So if that is the case, then why not skip the virus in the first place and, and just teach us a lesson without the virus? Wouldn't that be far less cruel? You know, this is the same kind of thinking that I often encounter around funerals, especially tragic funerals, particularly young funerals. People saying, oh, this death, it's, it's just part of God's plan. It, it happened for a reason. No, it didn't. It's not part of God's plan. It did not happen for a reason. That would be cruel. And I don't believe in a cruel God. And you know what? Jesus did not believe in a cruel God either. Because that's exactly the same issue that he dealt with in today's story. Jesus, in the story, meets a man who was born blind. And the story particularly speaks 
specifies that he was born blind, not became blind later. And his disciples ask Jesus, whose fault is it that this man was born blind? Now, why would they ask such a question as that? Why would they ask, why was this man born blind? Whose fault is it that he was born blind? Was it his fault or, or his parents' fault that he was born blind? Well, it's because our, our ancient spiritual ancestors believed that everything that happened in life was controlled by God. Every good thing that happened to you in your life was God rewarding you for something that you did right. And every bad thing that happened in your life was God punishing you for something that you've done wrong. And, and more so, they believed that that wrongdoing was punishable up to seven generations. And so the suffering that people experience today may not be caused by their own bad actions, but they believed it could be caused by, by their parents' actions or, or, or something that their grandparents did wrong or their great-grandparents or great-great-great or so on, up to seven generations they believed it could carry on. And Jesus completely rejected this notion. He said, not born blind because of anything that anybody did wrong, but he was born blind because that way God's glory could be revealed through him. And, and when I say it that way, I, I'm not meaning to say that God caused the man to be born blind, because I don't think that's what Jesus meant at all. Any more than God chooses for an infant to die prematurely or any more than God chooses to create a virus and a pandemic to circle the world. What Jesus meant was that God will work through people to take a tragedy and turn it into a blessing. In the case of the blind man, Jesus turned it into an opportunity for healing so that that man could then go on to share hope with all the rest of the people he knew, with the rest of the world that he knew. And if for us, in the case of the coronavirus, God is already working through people to turn tragedy into blessing. People, groups, companies, they're already stepping up to help. God did not cause the virus. So is there a meaning we can take from this? Well, if there is a meaning we can take from this, it does not come from God sending the virus to us on purpose. But it comes from God's, from the actions that God inspires us to do in response to the virus as God works through each and every one of us to turn tragedy into blessing. So if, if you know somebody, a person, a group, or a company who is helping right now to turn tragedy into blessing during this crisis, then please go ahead and mention them in the comment section below. Let's now gather our hearts in prayer. God of peace and comfort, this is an upsetting and even frightening time for us as your people. You call us to be together in community, to love and support each other, but we cannot be together in person right now. We're distancing and isolating for the sake of our health and the health of those around us when tragedy strikes, we often need to search for a meaning. You are the ultimate source for meaning. So we turn to you now for meaning. Reassure us that the meaning will not be found in blaming you for sending the virus. The meaning will be found in how we open ourselves up to the leading of your spirit in how we respond to the virus in a way that is helpful and a blessing to others. And so we pray now for those who are sick or dying. 
for those who are suffering in their isolation, for those who do not have the resources to stock up for a few days, let alone a few weeks, for those who are running out of food, running out of medicine, or running out of resources. We pray for those in public leadership who are trying to make the wisest decisions for all our health and all our safety. We pray for the doctors, the nurses, and the medical staff who are being called on for sacrifice and aid. And we pray for those who are afraid. Please calm our fears. Help us to disconnect when the news is overwhelming. Encourage us to get outside and go for a walk. And now, God, we lift before you our own prayers in the silence of our hearts. continue together in the words that Jesus taught us. Join me as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God bless, and I'll see you next week.